Jack Talks Tools. I'm Tom. So today we're working on, um, actually we're working on the base for this traveling squareness comparator that uh, that I showed in a, uh, a meatloaf episode. Uh, I think it was number 115, I think. Uh, I'm not positive, but uh, the idea, just to refresh those folks who haven't seen this before, is is it's a perpendicular column with a traveling um, bearing that we can sweep with. So the idea is that this is perfectly squared at the base at all times no matter where you are and when we have an object that we want to interrogate we can bring it up, zero it against the indicator, sweep to find the high spot and then traverse up and check it at any point along the the inspection distance and examine it for perpendicularity. Okay, so this needs a very special base that this uh, fits into that's uh, um, basically permanently square with the world. Okay, it's very important that this column is perfectly square, and uh, so we're gonna we're gonna make that base. And honestly, I've already made it, uh, and this video is about how we go about making uh, making the base for this. There's the completed part, and. Um, so uh, what do you say we get started and uh, show you guys how, to, how I went about making this base. So once they're annealed, you see how soft they are? See that? It's like butter. And you hear it? They sound dead. They don't have that ting of a uh, uh, material that's been work hardened. Anyway. side of this a little bit.
That's lead, just so you know. My buddy A bomb gave me that. Help seat that with the big drills. You want to get the full diameter of the drill engaged before you really start uh, giving it the beans. Um, you saw it vibrating there a little bit, so until you kind of get it all the way in there. So now I'll give it the beans here. What do you say we do a little boring here? So the bore right now, we just drilled it, um, and it's it's one and a half or uh, 38 millimeters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up and I'm going to touch the ID of the bore like that, and then I'm going to set my DRO just so I can kind of track what's going on. 0.5 and when I get close to my target which is two inch then um, let's see I'm all the way through here what is that that's uh, that's three and an eighth okay so let's do this I'm gonna set the Z to just while I'm while I'm at, oh it's already set okay good all right so let's do a little uh, little dig in there the sound change there it's always a, a good uh, indicator when you pop through all right the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut away this material here and we're gonna leave a we're going to leave a little rim around the outside so we're going to kind of dig in and come out um, and that's to create a, a rim around this that the, the instrument will actually sit on and then we're going to actually relieve that and make some feet there so the bore is pretty close so what I like to do in these situations is kind of rough everything and get everything pretty close to my target numbers and then go back and do the finish work uh, that way any, you know, hogging and whatnot, uh, the distortion or changes from that kind of go away. It's just a habit. Uh, probably doesn't matter in this case too much because this thing's so kind of massive. So, uh, all right. So, you know, we're already calibrated there. So I know what my diameter is, which is five inches. I'm going to come out to around five inches. And the first thing I like to do, I'm going to get on five inches. And you're not looking at the DRO, so you got to trust me here. I'm going to come up, I'm just going to put a little witness bark there, just so I have a, a visual, okay? And then I do the, the bozo check, just to make sure that I didn't screw up, okay? And it is five inches, all right? So I'm pretty happy with that, that I didn't screw it up. <laughs> and then, um, uh, let's do the feed change lever, so we're feeding in now. And we're just going to go out 
close to our number and then we're just going to dig in a little bit and then we're going to feed in and we'll do that until we get to the right depth. I, this should have about two thou left on the uh, on the bore here, and that'll you know this gets heat treated so, um, and then oops I didn't like that one um, gets heat treated and then we'll we'll hone the idea of this oh yeah we'll hone the ID. Okay, uh, what do we got here? One, about one. Yeah, about one. A little less than I wanted, but let's see. Do a nice tight one here. Okay, a little over one. All right, which is fine. Um, ideally, we're going to have about two tenths press or um, with the, the large pin. So I'm going to break this edge, and then I'll turn the OD, and then we'll flip it around. Then we got some uh, some cool contouring to do on the other side. These are uh, stops that I can put against the uh, back side of the piece since we're going to be turning, doing some heavy turning there. So these will buck up against that like so. So now we'll set the we'll set these so that they're all the same so that the piece is true in the uh, in the chuck. All right, so we come in and we'll start on this one. And we'll just zero it up and. You don't put a lot of compression on the indicator that way when you spin to the next one. Um, all right, that one needs to come in a little bit. Um, you don't catch the edge of the stop um, if you have a lot of. It's pretty good, but let's adjust it anyway. And these things, they, they stay pretty good. So. All right, that looks pretty good. So now those are those are per perpendicular to uh, the axis of rotation here, so which is a handy thing. go too hairball on it because or let's uh <laughs> I got a just a small grip on the uh, 
uh, on the rim of that, okay? So I don't want to go A-bomb on this thing uh, with it just grabbing a, a teeny bit like that. So, um, at least I don't think so. <laughs> you need to feed it a little harder though, so that's uh, between the feed rate. All right, I switched inserts. I didn't like, uh, this is what I had in there before. This is an ISCAR, but it's got a PP uh, chip breaker, which makes it uh, the edge kind of positive. You see the hook there? So this is a little flatter one with some uh, some bumpies on it that uh, um, that uh, break the chip in a different way. So this is 8620 running uh, 550, RP uh, 550 RPM and I think it's about uh, 10 thousandths feed rate or 12 thousandths feed rate. So let's give it a... You can see the difference here. Let's do 150. And you can see the, the chips are nice and short and they're just peeling right off of there. It's uh, Bob's your uncle. Finish is real nice too. Okay, so I've started to form this uh, this big corner radius here, and it's just a decorative corner radius. And I get this big whopping carbide insert uh, um, round turning tool. So what I got to do now is I want to um, what I have in the, my drawing is I'm going to relieve this area here, um, not all the way up to the the edge. So it's going to have a radius and then a diameter and then into this radius and then blend into this flat here. That's the idea. And there's some tricks, you know, unless you have a really rigid lathe uh, um, or a CNC or whatever where you can just kind of drive around that corner. If, you know, large tool engagements like this tend to produce chatter, which are kind of a drag. Uh, and it's hard to get out once you kind of get it. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna dig in here. I know what the diameter is. And uh, I want to relieve this down, you know, roughly a quarter inch on the on the diameter, and then uh, we'll we'll come out and and blend into this radius, uh, and I'll show you how to do that because you kind of do it as a step. Um, you do a little bit at a time, and you're kind of uh, only engaging a, a a part of an arc of the tool, right? You're never really fully engaging this. Now it's it doesn't make a true radius. Um, but um, this is just, you know, it's really just to soften it for when you're handling it and all that. So it's not super, you know, it doesn't have any accuracy requirements there, okay? So anyhow, let's, uh, let's do a little bit. And um, yeah, I'm gonna switch the camera, I'll get, a, get over the top of this so you guys can get a good look at it. Let's try that. Feed it by hand initially. I'm gonna leave a little, a little thing at the top there. I'm starting to get the idea, right? So here's, here's where it gets interesting. So you can see it's starting to engage more and more. It you listen for the little hum. There, see they hear that little hum? Now I'm backing it off in the X. All right, so I'm kind of walking around that, uh, uh, around that radius. A little bit hard to explain. And copious lube kind of helps, but so 
I'm trying to also establish where that uh, where that shoulder is too. So I'm not super worried about the finish in this case here. Well, yet I will. <laughs> Here's where uh, you want to get this kind of stuff out of there because if it gets trapped between the uh, it trapped in that area then you're kind of hosed so Anyway, that's the general idea. Um, I'm going to keep going here. I'll be back in a minute. Okay. careful. It's kind of the finished path. It's creaking up on it here. It's actually working pretty good because this is the full cut here. All right. Get the hell out of there. All right. Isn't that cool how that smoke just curls around that edge? I just love the, love the look of that. It's like dragon breath or something. Alright, that's it. Okay. Okay, that's pretty good. A little sanding. Yeah, that's nice. So that's just so you can kind of get a hold of this thing, you know with this post. So this, we're gonna radius that and then we're gonna put a big fat radius on that edge too. So that'll be interesting.